Hi, everyone, and welcome to Periods Conversation with Aunt Flo and Aunt Flo's founder and CEO, Claire Coder. We are so excited to talk today a little bit about Periods partnership with Aunt Flo and how it has really impacted our service work and ability to distribute products to millions of people and specifically we want to talk about how workplaces can have a big role in this. So welcome, Claire. Woohoo! So excited to be here. Thank you. This is awesome. Um, for those of you watching, this is a pre-recorded conversation, so we don't have live questions coming in, although many of you have submitted questions to me in the previous days, which I will do my best to answer during this conversation. So these are some of the questions that came in in preparation for this call. We asked the question, what do you want to know about the partnership between Period and Onflow, one of our main corporate partners of Period Products? And so the questions were all over the place, but these were some of the ones that really represented the curiosity. Um, why are products so expensive? How many products do you give away? What do you do with them? And how can I help get them in schools? Um, so Claire, I know we're going to touch on a lot of this in our conversation, but maybe you could touch on the questions about why are period products so expensive and how many do you give away? Man, I love these questions and I am so glad to be here as somebody who menstruates myself. I too have experienced expensive menstrual products and not having a menstrual product when I needed one. That's actually the entire reason I founded on flow. I got my period didn't have a menstrual product when I needed one. I tried to use a coin operated tampon and pad dispenser. And I was like, why am I paying a quarter for a menstrual product and who carries around coins? And so I've, I've experienced both these questions and part of the reason that I found it on flow is to provide answers. So, um, you know, why are menstrual products not free in your school or why have you not been able to find them when you need them? Um, well, part of that reason is most folks haven't thought about it. When you think about somebody who's managing your facility, it's typically a janitor or a facilities leader who may or may not have menstruated themselves and they might not have thought about it. They're, the traditional model has been a coin operated menstrual product dispensing system for ages and there was no other solution. That being said, when we founded the company in 2017, we designed and developed a free vend menstrual product dispensing system so that businesses and schools do have a sustainable way to offer freely accessible menstrual products in the bathroom. That's right. No more quarter, no more two dimes. Um, this is an accessible way for you to have products at your business and school. And we'll talk a little bit about how you can be a part of advocating for these products in your business or school. We, are, we stock hundreds of companies and schools across the United States. And if you don't have freely accessible menstrual products in your workplace or you're in your school, then we can work and talk together about how we can make that happen. Um, and as, uh, as a part of this program, we're so thankful that Period is one of our partners. When I founded the company, it was critical that everyone had access to menstrual products. Not if you're just attending school, not if you just have are at a workplace that offers free menstrual products, but even for the millions of folks that are living at or below the poverty line that might be choosing between menstrual care and access to food. And so that's why at Flow, for every 10 menstrual products that we sell, we donate one to a menstruator in need and some of our partners and specifically period. And we'll talk a little bit about our commitment for 2021 later on, but that's how um, us at Ant Flow are working to change the world one cycle at a time. Amazing, Claire. I love it. And it's because of corporate culture like yours that we are able to do our work. So one of the questions here, what is it, where does a donated products go? Um, period has three main pillars of programming, service, education, and advocacy. What we're really talking about here in this conversation is service. Um, we have over 800 organizations that we work with around the United States, both period chapters and partner service organizations. So other nonprofits, food pantries, shelters who rely on us for those period products. And so when a partner like Flow comes in with their very generous donations, we can as efficiently and impactfully as possible get the products out directly to those in need. So they're not sitting on a shelf anywhere. They're not working on a slow supply chain or logistics issue. Um, we can have as much impact as possible. Okay, so why are we talking about this, Claire? Uh, what is period poverty? 
and why does it matter? Um, you know, at period, we talk about period poverty being any inability to afford or access period products when you are in need. Um, a lot of people think that this is something that can be back of mind or maybe something that doesn't happen in their community, but pretty shockingly, nearly one in four United States students uh, currently suffers from period poverty and inability to afford menstrual products. Um, and over half of menstruators um, tell us that they can manage their periods better when they are at school. So what does this tell us? This tells us that there's a lot of folks that are relying on free products in the institutions where they go to school or where they work. And so that's where a partnership like this comes into play, is making sure that the institutions where people spend their days have access to products. Michaela, I love this. Actually, on this slide, I'm curious, when I was first learning about period poverty, um, about the choices that folks have to make between purchasing menstrual products and purchasing food, maybe you could talk a little bit about what that process looks like and how period is really making sure that you don't have to make that choice. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, the numbers really tell the story. You know, nearly one in four menstruators have had to make a decision between another essential good and a period product. So when we say essential goods, we're talking food and clothing and shelter, right? So when you need to make the decisions, what it ends up doing is it puts the ability for you to manage your period lower on the list of what you're able to provide for yourself and your family. And I think it goes back to what you were saying, Claire, about the historical nature of how these systems were set up. Likely, the people that were making these lists of essential goods of what was donated freely and accessibly were not menstruators themselves. So this is an overlooked crisis and a solvable crisis. You know, we need to put period products onto the list of essential goods that people think of when they're providing items for shelters, schools, prisons, community centers, libraries, workplaces. This is not a fringe issue. This is an issue that intersects gender justice and economic justice, which is something that everyone cares about. Um, so thank you for asking that question. These are real nuts and bolts kitchen table issues that people are thinking about. Um, and we're here to solve it. Let's um, talk about know, workplaces. Yes, let's talk about workplaces. I, I love that um, there is an intersection even between folks that can't afford menstrual products. And, and even if you do have the financial stability to afford menstrual products, you can still be caught without a menstrual product. And this is why I started my company. Um, in some of these facts on this slide right here, you can see that 86% of respondents in a national research study con conducted by Free the Tampons found that a person with their period unexpectedly got their period in public without the supplies they need, right? And so when we're working with businesses and we're working with folks that are thinking about implementing products, one of the questions that we get, get asked is, well, don't you just know don't you just carry around the products yourself and gosh i wish it was that way that i just knew all of the time every single time that uh, mother nature was going to visit but this is this is the fact and 79 percent have improvised by macgyvering a tampon or pad out of toilet paper or something else um so not only do you get your period in public then you have to make your own tampon and then for businesses and why we really work with businesses and schools is we recognize that by offering menstrual products in the bathroom you can ensure that your employees and students and guests stay at their workplaces. We found that 34% of folks that got their period in public went home immediately to get period products. So that is missed opportunities for leaders and young leaders at organizations. It's missed opportunities for students. Um, and actually, New York City Public Schools did a research study when implementing free menstrual products and found that by offering free menstrual products in their bathrooms, attendance increased amongst young girls by 2.4%, which is really remarkable. Um, and so obviously the importance of offering free menstrual products in the bathrooms, not at the nurse's office, not in the back cupboard, in the bathroom is so important. And that's why at Aunt Flo, we created the sustainable solution for businesses to implement as well as doing good and then giving back. So as we mentioned, for every 10 menstrual products that we sell to businesses to offer for free to their employees and students and guests, we then also donate a menstrual product to organizations like Period. So I think what we're really talking about when we talk about lack of workplace or student engagement, we're really talking about allowing people who menstruate to live their full and complete lives and not have to have this be a barrier for needing to leave a place that they want to be at. I love that. Thanks for spelling that out.
Yes, we always compare it to toilet paper, right? You don't have to carry around a roll of toilet paper. Why, why do you also have to carry around menstrual products? If toilet paper is offered for free, why aren't tampons and pads? I love that. A world where menstrual products are as common as toilet paper. Uh, so why are we talking about this right now? Right now, period is in the middle of our state of the period giving challenge. We do a state of the period fundraising event every fall. Um, and so this year we are celebrating it by highlighting all of our programming. And so this week we're talking about service, how we give away those millions of pieces of period products each year and how we distribute them. So when we talk about period being a nonprofit focused on service, education, and advocacy, what we're talking about is literally distributing it, right? Getting it on trucks, getting it to people that need it, fostering those relationships with our organizational service partners. Um, this is an issue that we would hope would get easier every year. Unfortunately, this year, we have seen the pandemic exacerbate period poverty. Um, before the pandemic, our research showed us that one in five young people were unable to access and afford period products. Now it is one in four. So our commitment to helping to distribute millions of pieces of product annually has not gone away and will not. So Claire, tell us how you're helping us this year. Yes, yes. Um, we have been so thrilled to be able to support Period ever since the beginning of our company, right? Onflow is a for-profit company, but we are also for good. So as we mentioned, we do commit to donating to organizations like Period to ensure that people living at or below the poverty line have access. This year, we'll be do donating 200,000 menstrual products to Period. Um, and when we think about donations, it's not lower grade product. All of our menstrual products are 100% organic cotton, degradable, all of our pads have wings. So the same quality of product is going to people both living out of below the poverty line and then also the businesses that are um, investing in our program. So we're so grateful to partner with Period and continue our relationship. We've now been partners for a few years. Um, and the reason we love working with Period is you do have the infrastructure to receive large amounts of product as well as distribute quickly. And that's really important. Um, for our company to be able to continue to give back to period um, as well as some other small grassroots organizations too to make sure uh, that we keep uh, changing the world one cycle at a time i love it and i hope that um, other companies out there that work in manufacturing period products really hears this call to action because we are all in it together and you know if our goal is to solve this in our lifetimes we're not going to do it without partnerships like this okay so on that note why does this matter? Well, because if period fundraised to purchase all of the period products that we needed, it would be unsustainable and we would serve less people, right? We do purchase plenty of product, but because of partnerships like this, we can give out really high quality product um, in a way that is sustainable and reliable. Um, and one of the things we're really proud of is our distribution infrastructure and all of those relationships that we have. Um, so this is really, I think, a call to action for everyone that works in and around this space is, you know, the solution is at hand. Uh, we know how to get products to people. It just simply needs to be something that is top of mind uh, that we are all a part of. Um, and this isn't just period product companies, right? This is other, any other for-profit company that wants to be a real mover in this space. Um, like this is why we're talking about workplaces here today too, is there's a lot that people can do to push high quality products into the hands of folks in need. I love that you're making this call to action and you're so right. Things don't get done unless we work together. There's tons of organizations within the menstrual space, but there's also tons of organizations, period. And everyone knows somebody that menstruates. Everyone knows somebody that menstruates, your sister, your mother, your girlfriend, your best friend. Um, and so it's a great call to action that it doesn't just have to be our company. It has to be many companies working together to make sure that everyone has access to basic necessities. Okay, so what can everyone do? Who's watching this today? Yay, holy moly, <laughs> what can you do? Um, so, you know, one of the initial questions that was asked, Michaela, is um, why does my school not offer free menstrual products? Well, let us share with you that 
nearly all of our programs that are at middle schools, high schools, or universities have been led by students. Students raise their hand and they say, this is important to me that menstrual products are um, accessible at my school. Most of the legislation that pertains to offering freely accessible menstrual products in schools has been led by students reaching out to their uh, representatives saying, this is important to me. And so if your school doesn't have access to menstrual products and you're sitting here listening, you have the opportunity to raise your hand and say, this is important. Reach out to your uh, principal, the superintendent, the dean of students, student government. Um, and from a workplace perspective, they're the head of guest experience, your people operations leaders, and sometimes your managers as well. And at goantflow.com, we have all of the resources to support you as an advocate. And then, of course, for every business or school that invests in offering freely accessible menstrual products at the organization, we donate a menstrual product for every 10 that are purchased. So baked into our business model is making sure that everybody has access. And so um, that's an easy call to action. Go to our website and start advocating today. You genuinely have all of the power uh, and we're excited to continue to support you. And I think on that same note, if you are looking to make systemic policy change, reach out to us at period. This is a lot of what we do. We support young people to be the voice face leaders of this movement in systemic policy change. And that is really happening. I think this next year is a banner year for menstrual equity. We are seeing state by state and county by county, school district by school district, policies change that are starting to mandate period products in schools and also repealing the luxury tax on period products. Um, and period is here to help you with that too, with advocacy support. Um, in addition to our main website, period.org and on Flo's website, there's a couple other websites here with action and discussion on them. Period-action.org is what we call our launch pad, and it's filled with resources for our youth chapter members or anyone that wants to get involved with us and learn a little bit more about the crisis of period poverty. So please take action. You're never too old for this movement. We need an intergenerational support system to solve this in our lifetimes. <laughs>